Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Abdul Basit again with a new and interesting topic of uh, linguistics. And today's topic is manner of articulation of consonants. Well, do you know what is this? This is a sugar cane and it is absolutely sweet and juicy. And after discussing this topic, I would squeeze the juice with my teeth. So let's start the topic that is manner of articulation. So uh, as you know that consonants are classified on the three bases. Okay. On three bases. Uh, voicing, place of articulation and manner of articulation. We have discussed first two classifications of consonants, voicing and place of articulation. But here in this video, we'll discuss manner of articulation of consonants. Regarding manner of articulation of consonants, we are concerned with how sounds are produced, what articulatory organs are involved, and what kind of obstruction of air uh, happens somewhere in the mouth okay uh, well in the production of consonants there is either partial or complete stoppage of air obstruction of air somewhere in the mouth and in manner of articulation we are uh, particularly concerned with the obstruction of air all right so first category regarding the uh, manner of articulation of consonants is plosives or stops okay there are three types of plosives bilabial plosives alveolar plosives and velar plosives well there are two bilabial plosives p and b p and b all right so why these sounds are called plosives in fact when we produce these two sounds p and b both of the lips join together and there is a complete obstruction of the air behind the lips okay but at the end the air is released immediately with an explosion so that is why these are called plosives or stops okay the next category is uh, uh, alveolar plosives uh, and those are t and d t and d okay well the tip of the tongue reaches the alveolar ridge it touches the alveolar ridge and the air passage is blocked with with the uh, joining of the tip of the tongue and the alveolar ridge all right so the air is stopped behind the uh, alveolar ridge and tongue and at the end it is released with an explosion again so these are called uh, alveolar plosives the third category is velar plosives okay why these are called velar plosives because the back of the tongue raises and it touches the uh, soft palate that is also called velar okay so the back of the tongue raises and it and it touches the velar and the air is stopped behind the velar and at the end it is released again with an explosion uh, as in k and g k and g okay so uh, these all sounds are called plosives or stops the second category regarding manner of articulation is fricatives fricatives okay well again we have got um, dental fricatives labiodental fricatives okay uh, alveolar fricatives and palatal fricatives 
first of all, we'll talk about the labiodental fricatives. That are f and v. F and v. Well, why these sounds are called fricatives? The reason behind this is that the air is not completely uh, uh, blocked. There is a partial closure. There is a partial uh, closure. Uh, there is a partial obstruction of air in the mouth and there is a vibration all right when we produce the sound okay there is partial closure and when we produce the sound v, there is again partial closure and the air passes with a little bit vibration this is why these are called fricatives okay so f and v are labiodental fricatives and then we have dental fricatives theta as think okay thank theta okay and the this that these and those all right so uh, in these uh, sounds uh, the air is not completely blocked okay the air passage is not completely blocked there is uh, a partial closure again and the air passes with vibration so these are two dental fricatives and then we have alveolar fricatives uh, s and z okay the tip of the tongue approximates the alveolar ridge or teeth ridge and uh, because of the approximation of uh, the tip of the tongue to the alveolar ridge there is not a complete closure there is a partial closure because the tongue appro approximates it does not touch the alveolar ridge all right and because of it there is uh, you know partial closure and the air passes again with vibration all right so uh, next we have got palatal fricatives okay palatal fricatives uh, are the uh, sounds in the production of which the tip of the tongue touches the uh, palate okay and uh, these are sh, sh, sh and y sh and y okay uh, as in shop and uh, play okay y sound is there so these are uh, palatal fricatives then uh, the third category regarding the manner of articulation is affricates okay affricates affricates all right and we have only two affricates ch and j ch and j as in chair and jug all right uh, well there is a slight difference between the plosives and the affricates and the difference is uh, that uh, when the plosives are produced there is a stoppage of air at the beginning and the air is released suddenly at the end okay but in the production of affricates there is a definite stoppage of air there is a certain blockage of the air passage at the beginning but at the end air is released slowly it's not released with explosion the air is released slowly therefore these are called affricates okay so uh, ch and j are uh, again uh, palatal uh, affricates these are also called alveopalatals but uh, they are known as palatal affricates because the tip of the tongue uh, the tongue touches the uh, palate and the air stops at the beginning and is released at the end but slowly the fourth category regarding the manner of articulation is nasals okay well there are uh, three nasal sounds m n and ing all of these are voiced sounds all the nasals are voiced sounds all right so why these sounds are called nasals because in fact the nasal cavity opens 
and the air passes through the nasal cavity all right uh, the air is stopped in the mouth and the air passes through the nasal cavity uh, for example m is a bilabial nasal sound n is an alveolar alveolar nasal sound and then ing is a velar nasal sound all right so these are three nasal sounds uh, that we have got uh, regarding manner of articulation uh, uh, next we have liquids all right there are two liquids l as in uh, light and r as in red all right l sound is also called uh, lateral liquid okay it is also called lateral liquid because the tip of the tongue touches the alveolar ridge uh, but the air passes from the sides of the tongue the air is released from the sides of the tongue so there is no uh, there is no complete closure of the air again there is a, a, a partial closure when we produce the sound l okay but the air passes from the sides of the tongue without any vibration okay and then the second uh, uh, liquid sound that we have is r okay the tip uh, the tongue is raised to the palate and then it curls back slightly when we produce this sound and there is uh, again uh, no vibration uh, as uh, there is a vibration in uh, uh, fricatives the last category regarding manner of articulation is semi vowels or glides these are called semi vowels or glides all right so there are two sounds w and j w as in wet j as in yes okay so why these sounds are called semi vowels or glides because the tongue glides just like uh, it glides when the vowel sounds are produced all right and uh, uh, these two sounds are voiced and when these sounds are produced there is no stoppage of air there is no obstruction of air therefore these are called semi vowels okay well these sounds uh, usually occur at the beginning of a word or at the beginning of uh, a, a syllable okay they 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 do not behave uh, uh, as the uh, nucleus of a syllable all right so they are consonants but they are produced like vowels therefore they are called semi vowels or glides so this was all about today's lecture uh, uh, i hope that you have got the complete understanding of uh, manner of articulation of consonants so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel share the video and hit the like button thank you bye bye take care